Welcome to the multidisciplinary session. This is Salon BC, if you're still having a little trouble figuring out how the salon, the, the ballroom magically turns into salons. Uh, and our first speaker is Sergio Niosa, talking about exploring neural text simplification models. Hello, I'm uh, Sergio Nisioi. Can you hear me? Okay, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm from the University of Bucharest, um, Human Language Technology Research Center, and together with Sanya Steiner, we worked on a neural text simplification model, uh, which I'm going to present. Um, so first, what's, what is text simplification? Uh, it's exactly what it sounds it is. Uh, it's, um, uh, you have basically English text that you want to simplify to improve accessibility for people, uh, increase learning uh, comprehension or readability. Uh, you also might want to aid uh, hearing impaired people and uh, you can also use it as a pre-processing uh, step for NLP tools. So a few examples of uh, these uh, data sets that um, make use of simplification is the uh, Nuzella project or uh, Simplish English Wikipedia or uh, subtitles, uh, malentendu sous-titres in French, and um, these subtitles are made for, uh, for people with uh, hearing impaired, uh, with, with disabilities. And, uh, okay, so uh, in this uh, paper, we use the simple Wikipedia corpus. Um, this is uh, constructed from automatic uh, sentence alignments between uh, normal and uh, English Wikipedia in a simplified way. And uh, this uh, data set contains a multi-reference um, development and test set uh, created by Shu et al. Uh, it also has an abundance of name entities uh, which can uh, produce high lexical richness. So for example, if you look at this table here, uh, we can see that uh, in, in terms of uh, entities discovered in the original and simplified texts, uh, there are quite a, quite a lot of locations, persons, uh, and so on. So uh, overall, the, the lexical richness of the simplified text uh, contains um, is, is pretty high because of the entities. So the type token ratio uh, is, uh, is still, uh, is still a, 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 in a high value. And um, well, it's, it's error prone, but it's large enough to, to train deep learning models on it. And uh, this is uh, basically the, the whole architecture of our model. I'm not gonna talk about it uh, again and again because uh, I guess all of you are already familiarized with neural sequence to sequence models. But uh, here, it's uh, just a basic uh, sequence to sequence model with attention layer and um, input feeding. Um, we use the 500 in units. Uh, the size of the embedding is 500. Um, the size of the vocabulary is 50,000, and uh, we train it with uh, SGD for uh, 15 epochs. So uh, one thing that we wanted to try was uh, whether uh, embeddings uh, from outside our data can help uh, or aid the simplification. So one thing that we did was use the set of global embeddings from Google News, um, containing, uh, well, of size 300, from, uh, 3 million words, so it's quite a big data. Uh, and um, we, we, we also train some local embeddings, the same, uh, the same approach, but on the, on the training and test, uh, well, on the simple and the original version of our data. So for the encoder, we use uh, the uh, original uh, embeddings, and for the decoder, we use the simplified embeddings. Uh, and we, we create um, a concatenation for each word of the global and local embeddings so that uh, we get uh, the, both from two, two worlds. We get also the global uh, representation uh, extracted from uh, Google News, but you also get uh, local embeddings uh, trained on, uh, on the data that we have there. So ideally, we would like to have uh, an embedding that uh, covers uh, uh, cases uh, or representations both from, uh, from generic English, but also from our corpus. And uh, having said this, uh, well, when we simplify, we use beam search to sample sentences at the output. Uh, we use different beam sizes since um, we didn't know uh, exactly uh, which beam size would fit best, so we tried different versions from 5 to 12. Uh, also, one thing that we noticed is that uh, if we sample different hypotheses, uh, the, the first most likely hypothesis uh, in the beam search algorithm, uh, the first four hypotheses uh, have different um, uh, different properties, um, so um, we all we look at all the four uh, hypotheses, and um, we also do some evaluation with the automatic metrics. Uh, automatic metrics for text simplification are not really uh, uh, well; they are good, 
but uh, not really uh, suitable in a, in, in a way that can be used to, to give you a measure of confidence on how good the, mo the model behaves. It's mostly used to give you a hint or an idea if the model really performs uh, really badly or if it's, uh, well, if it's, uh, it's better than nothing. So evaluation metrics, we use Bleu, which is not necessarily a suitable metric for text simplification, as uh, other researchers have shown. Um, one thing, though, to mention about Blue is that uh, it has been shown to correlate with grammaticality. Uh, grammaticality, uh, especially when you have multiple references uh, in, the, in the test set or in the uh, evaluation set. So uh, another m evaluation metric that we used was uh, SARI, proposed by Shu. Uh, uh, it's a text simplification evaluation metric uh, constructed specifically for these purposes. It covers uh, both the uh, differences between input, output, and reference sentences. So while Blur looks only at the output and the, and the references, uh, this measure also looks at the input and how much it, uh, the output diverges from the input. This is a, a, a good thing to mention in simplification since it's, it's a monolingual task. But um, on the other hand, it can also uh, rank highly uh, differences in the output that uh, are not necessarily preserving content from the input. So uh, let's look a bit about uh, at the human evaluation criteria that we used. So um, we used uh, four uh, human evaluation criteria. Grammaticality, uh, which is, uh, well, the degree of grammatical correctness of the simplification, regardless of the, of the input. So uh, we don't care about the meaning also. Uh, like, colorless green ideas, sleep furiously is a perfectly grammatical sentence. Uh, meaning preservation is uh, the amount of content that's being preserved from the input to the output by the model. So we also ask uh, human annotators to uh, well, to, uh, to rank this, uh, this criterion. Uh, simplicity as well, and uh, the correct number of changes. The correct number of changes, we want to we wanna make sure that the system, uh, uh, as much as possible, generates uh, changes that are correct. Uh, even if uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's a bit, uh, the system becomes a bit uh, conservative. Uh, so, in terms of results, uh, well, we're going to see some numbers now. The evaluation results on Wikipedia, uh, uh, so we, we compare against, uh, so first of all, let's look a bit at the, at the different uh, neural tank simplification models that we have here. So the first one is the default with beam size five and the first hypothesis. is the, the basic vanilla neural sequence to sequence models. So we can see that the output um, has uh, in total 36 correct changes. Uh, 36 changes from which 72% are correct, which is a pretty high number. So also, since it has not a very big uh, num amount of changes, we can see that the grammaticality and the meaning preservations have also high scores. So of course, uh, annotators uh, spotted that the, the, the output is correct, it's grammatical, it contains the meaning, uh, the, the, the meaning of the initial sentence. But in terms of simplicity, it's not really simplifying that much. Uh, in terms of Sari and Blue scores, uh, I think uh, they, they didn't say too much in, uh, in this table here. Uh, but if we look at the, at the hypothesis selected by, um, so for example, if we take a neural text simplification model and we generate, uh, we do a grid search on beam size and the hypothesis, uh, given the automatic evaluation metric called Sari, we, we observe that the, the total number of changes here increases uh, to 72. Well, also the number of correct changes decreases a little bit. But uh, we can see that uh, it's, uh, the, the, mo the system itself, or the output, is uh, more likely to have uh, more differences compared to the input, which kind of correlates with what SARI indicates. While uh, Blow is also um, a conservative uh, a score, it, it shows uh, the, the it, it tends to, to, to have grammatical sentences with less changes. But Let's look at what happens when we add the uh, word to vec in the, in the, in the pot here. Uh, so the, the default model here with uh, hypothesis one and beam size five uh, doesn't have as many, too many changes, the same as the default model previously. But when we look at the, uh, at the, at the output um, to and with sorry, we see that, um, well, uh, that the total number of changes uh, increases uh, by, by a lot. And uh, actually, it's not only that, but also the, the correct number of changes stays pretty high as well. Uh, grammaticality and meaning preservation still are not 
very, very far away from, uh, from other models. And in terms of simplicity, we see quite a big improvement uh, when adding uh, the, the, the word to vec models. Also, uh, in terms of uh, Bleu, we can see that uh, the, the model is, again, more conservative when we look at the, at the output gen uh, selected by the Bleu score. Uh, and also uh, that um, uh, the grammaticality still stays uh, and the meaning preservation still stays high. Uh, compared to other systems uh, previously proposed, the phrase-based machine translation uh, or uh, the um, uh, statistical uh, machine translation uh, tuned with SARI, we can see that the previous systems actually uh, make more uh, changes, uh, have a tendency to make more changes, although the amount of correct changes in the, in the previous systems, uh, that previous system, systems make is, um, is smaller. So in a way, this, uh, this uh, corroborates the idea that the deep learning models kind of generate, uh, kind of generate uh, uh, good, good uh, grammatical uh, uh, examples. So uh, here I have a good, uh, nice, uh, nice example of, uh, of, uh, of the original sentence, which is, Perry Saturn with Terry defeated Eddie Guerrero with uh, China to win the WWF uh, cham European Championship, and Saturn pinned uh, Guerrero after a diving elbow drop. So uh, if we look at the, at the uh, MTS model uh, tuned with SARI, we see quite a good simplification example here. We cherry-picked this one because uh, we really like the, the output. Uh, Perry Saturn pinned Guerrero to win the WWF uh, European Championship. It's quite a good output compared to other systems. But look, uh, so the first hypothesis is not always the best for simplification. For example, let's look at this example. Uh, this is the original sentence. This is the first and the third hypothesis, the same as the original sentence. But if you look at the second hypothesis, we see quite a big, uh, a big uh, change in the, in the content, uh, so which kind of indicates content reduction. Also, if you look at the fourth hypothesis, we see that the parentheses have been removed. So it's kind of a good simplification uh, 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 output now. But also, which one is a good simplification is also a relative uh, thing to say. So if you look at the, the, this example here, the British decided to eliminate him and take the land by force. Well, uh, well the first hypothesis seems to be quite conservative, but the second one, we, we see a lexical replacement, the third one, uh, content reduction, and the fourth one, well, a lexical replacement, which is not correct. So, uh, of course, whereof one can speak, uh, thereof one must be silent, as Wittgenstein said. So here is a good uh, a sentence, uh, uh, that uh, has really uh, not necessarily a good output. So, for example, uh, the, the whole sentence uh, has much more content, and uh, there are many different uh, types of pains. Seems to be the first hypothesis. The second one is uh, 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 there are many different types of pain. There are many different kinds of pain. So, the f fourth hypothesis: there are many different types of pain in the world. Well, thanks. Um, so, conclusion: models are producing grammatical content which we already knew in a way. Pre-trained embeddings trigger more changes in the output so they can produce, uh, improve the, the, the overall results. Entities increase the difficulty of the task, especially with the, with the data. Um, and uh, NTS uh, models seem to be the only one that learn to jointly make content reduction in lexical simplification. Uh, the full code and everything is, uh, uh, is here. One last example, please. <laughs> and this is, uh, thanks. Okay, thank you very much. We have about one minute for questions. Yes. Um, nice work, thanks. Um, so in one of the tables you showed, um, you, you gave us the number of sentences or the number of changes that were there. And you're presenting absolute numbers there, and I wonder how much that you know, which fraction, how many sentences in comparison to, to the test set were actually simplified. And the reason I'm asking is because um, if you look at the, the simple Wikipedia corpus, there, there seem to be like really local changes. You know, the, the sentences are not very often rewritten completely, which, uh, and that's because, you know, the simple Wikipedia corpus is, um, comes from edits of users that just maybe replace a single word with another one. Um, and I wondered to which extent neural systems, um, sequence to sequence systems, are a good way to tackle these you know, very local changes, um, or whether you should 
you know, because what you're essentially doing is you, you encode the entire meaning of the sentence and decode from there, but those really, really tiny local changes, I think, would get lost there. So question one, how many changes did it actually um, relatively to the corpus size do? And second, what do you think about the you know, these very local changes. So, uh, yeah, so it, there's one bias that co it's coming from the corpus. It's definitely, uh, that's, uh, that's definitely one problem. Also, in terms of changes, um, it depends also on the, on the amount of entities that the sentence, the original sentence has. So if you have many entities and it's a sentence that's describing some locations, organizations, persons, or whatever, uh, the output will definitely not have that many changes also. Um, so the, regarding the, the, the second observation, we also trained some neural text simplification models on uh, Newzella. And uh, adding additional data, which is um, uh, better, uh, better constructed and with um, uh, uh, more, let's say, um, more, um, um, how do you say? Uh, well, adding better data to the, to the whole models makes, makes the model take better decisions, so for short. So adding Newzella also improved quite a lot the, the, whole, uh, the whole idea of, of making more changes.